So we just got our first duck egg that we've gotten in months. What's it been? A couple months? Uh, yeah, at least two or three months. Two or three months and we need to investigate. So we're gonna go out, check the coop, see if we're missing any other duck eggs. Take a little inventory of our ducks today. She can almost reach up to the water now. I know, she was going through my plants. She was digging through the dirt of my plants. I thought I had them high enough, but she's well, getting in there picking things out. She's got such a long neck. You don't see it normally. She's growing, I guess, more than we know. Sorry, Bamboo, you can't stay out here. Yeah, we're not taking with you outside today. Oh, in you go. So we're coming out here with some bird seed. We got some bird seed from our favorite seed guys, Valley Feed, down in Kansas City. And we've got a little bird feeder outside the house right here. Hey, I got this when we got married. I think this is a wedding present. Oh, really? I think so. What kind of birds have we seen out here? We've seen cardinals, blue jays. Oh, what were those black? I think the titmouse. And some other little birds we've just seen running around out here. Maybe you guys can let us know what birds we have out here. questions on how we cook our ducks and the best way I have found is slow cooking and then in a crock pot. It kind of dries out if you cook it like a chicken roasting it or anything. I made it for Christmas this year and it was just a little dry so this is the best way possible. I'm putting it in frozen. It's pretty early in the morning, 10 o'clock so you'll be done by dinner time. Put it on low. I'm gonna throw some carrots and some celery and onions just in there to flavor it up. It's on low and I will check on it a little bit after lunch and put salt and pepper on it when it thaws out a little bit better. Come out here to the coop today. We're gonna do a little checkup of all the ducks we have. We'll introduce you to them all. A couple of them have names, a couple of them don't. It's a little loud in here. So we do deep bedding here in the coop, and that just means we just keep piling on for the winter. We keep putting wood chips and straw. The chicken poop all mixes in, creates a layer of warmth, and so it actually puts off heat just like compost would. And then as soon as we get to a warmer time in the spring, We'll go ahead and dig all of this out of here and put some new uh, wood chips and straw. But what we don't know what's going on is where the ducks are laying, if they're laying. And so we need to dig up because they lay down there every night. And so we're just going to dig through there, see if we've been missing some eggs just to figure out what's going on. So we have two male ducks. This is our black Cayuga Drake. And we don't have a name for them yet. And so we're gonna show you all of these ducks. A couple of them have names, a lot of them don't. So feel free to suggest them. But this guy's pretty cool. We do like the black Cayugas. The females are almost supposed to lay a black covered egg. So we're really interested in getting some black Cayugas to hatch out this year. Did I get mud on my face? It's a messy job picking up ducks out in the mud. <laughs> So this one is our silver Swedish female and the black Cayuga and the silver Swedish we both got from Harland Hatchery, good friends of ours in southern Missouri. Uh, this is Eli's duck and so her name is Squeaker. The bill is more of a blue color instead of a orange that you would see on a Pekin duck. This is our male Muscovy duck. We only have one male Muscovy. This one and another one both came from hatching eggs that we got from a viewer of ours in Texas named Eric. And so these are chocolate Muscovies. The feathers look pretty black, but supposed to have a chocolate brown hue to it. And this is our other chocolate Muscovy. You might know her as Amelia. And she is our one flying duck. All the Muscovies uh, could definitely fly. So we clip one of their wings on all of them. And so they don't fly, but we've allowed her to fly around the yard and she always comes back. So. We have a lot of fun with her, but this is Amelia. And we have four or five other unnamed Muscovies. This is one of them. She's mostly white with a little bit of brown on her back. So let me show you the other ones right here and you can help us come up with some names for them. This is Muscovy number two. I think the cutest <laughs> of all the Muscovies. What do you think, Beck? The cutest? I don't know. I think I like the one you just like, the tan and white. The tan and white one you like? So this one has a white head and a black body. 
And this Muscovy is white with a little bit of black throughout. Black in the back. I don't know, kind of like an Oreo or something. And this Muscovy is almost all black with just a little white speckled in. Looks very similar to Amelia, but Amelia's got a green hue and she's almost all black. And we've got two more Muscovies that are out in the run right out here. And this is our all white Muscovy. You might remember her from our duckling hatching video where she took a couple of her newborn ducklings outside and a couple others were abandoned that we had to bring inside. She's been our best broody, our, really our only broody duck, but we don't have a name for her and she is all white. Please don't suggest to call her bad mother. <laughs> even though she bites. And she's the only one that I'm pretty sure lays all in our nesting box. She doesn't lay on the ground like the other ducklings. And this one's the last of our ducks. This is our uh, Muscovy duck named Flo or Florence. We got some help from you guys naming her on Instagram a couple weeks ago. I think you guys suggested the old lady names because she's, she's white on her head with a little bit of gray on top. <laughs> We've had quite a few breeds of ducks. We've had Pekins and Rowans. Uh, didn't care so much for those. The Pekins were really noisy and really wild. Didn't like us at all. The Muscovies, while they don't like us a ton, are not noisy at all. They make some squeaks, really slight hisses, but they just really don't make noises like the, the Pekins did with all the quacks. So we're definitely open to trying some different breeds of ducks this year. We'd love to hear if you guys have any suggestions for ones you'd love us to try. So those were our 10 ducks, two males, eight females. And for the past two and a half months, we've gotten one egg from Do you have any luck in here, hon? No. It's all still really frozen solid, so, I mean, it's just now starting to thaw out. It's 40 degrees out today, so I'm saying that they did not lay. Well, at least we didn't miss any. That makes me feel good, but we'd still like to figure out how to get them to lay again. So if you guys have any suggestions for what we can do to get our ducks laying here in the, the cold of winter, we'd love to hear it. Chickens aren't having any problems at all. They're laying as many eggs as they would in the summer. Right. It, they're doing really good. <laughs> Good job, Outlander. <laughs> so of course we like to use everything we deal with here. So some of the carrot peelings that we just got from our meal for the duck. We're gonna put in right here with the, the mealworms and the beetles. And we've got easily 5,000 beetles here in all four of these bins. But we haven't got a lot of mealworms yet. I think a lot of that has to do with the heat in here. They're supposed to be at like 75 or 80 degrees. We're not even quite to 70 degrees here in the house. It's just a really drafty house. So we've got, I'm starting to check these bins and I thought there was nothing really going on in it. And it's really exciting because I'm starting to see some movement down inside of here. Check this out. how small these little guys are. So if you're wondering how much time and effort it takes, every couple days we'll go through, we'll sort out any beetles that form up in the mealworm parts and then put them into the beetle trays. We'll check on their feed. Usually every couple days the, the carrots or potatoes have dried out and so we'll be sure to put something new in there to make sure they get hydration. So even though it feels like not a lot has happened so far that we've just had a lot of mealworms turn into beetles, now we're starting to see some little baby mealworms, like thousands of them are formed up inside here and now they just need to grow. So, and then we'll be able to start figuring out what to do if we're gonna feed some to the chickens. Uh, Cause that's our main goal with this is to have an extra protein source for the chickens to offset some of the feed costs and then see if we need to start expanding again if we get a bunch more beetles. So what do you guys think? The mealworm stuff, is it cool? Is it gross? You wanna see more of it, less of it? I think it's kind of fascinating. We've got a decent sized mealworm here, maybe about a centimeter in length. About the biggest I can find in one of these small tubs. So let's see if Bamboo will take this one because she hasn't been able to handle the bigger mealworms yet. Hey, oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. Here you go, good job. So it took her a minute, but she figured it out. All right, you ready to do this, buddy? Yeah! All right, so we got these little snow paint, snow crayon. Eli got them for his birthday a few weeks ago and we wanted to try it out. These are for painting the snow. So I don't know exactly what we're gonna do with this, but we're gonna try to decorate the snow a little bit. If you want to check it out, we'll have a link to it down in the description. That's going to cut it. That's fun. Yay, now I got a blue snowball! Okay, you want to try to paint a green? Some green? Yeah. Don't get it on your boots. Should we Never. spray Should we spray uh, Jack with some color? Just kidding. Here, let's make a pile of uh, snowballs or something. I tried making mouse. You did? 
Yeah, it looks just like them. Can we do a chicken or a White House on the Hill? Did I get it? Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 All right, add some blue to it. Woohoo! Good job, Eli. Too bad it's not edible. It'd be an awesome snow cone, wouldn't it? Yeah. But this stuff's not to eat. What do you got there? A castle. A castle? That's cool. You want to throw it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Throw it! Just throw it up in the air or something. Okay. Woo! -hoo! Oh, you hit your face! Oh. Let's throw it up and see what happens, huh? No look, no look. You can't cheat and look up. Almost. <laughs> here we go. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, we're just about to have our duck for dinner right here. Uh, but we got a package in the mail. And if you guys didn't know, we have a P.O. box. That was listed on our About Us page. But if you want to see it, we'll put it down in the description of this video. And we love to open up mail. So if you send it our way, we'll open it up. Okay, let's see what they made for us. They actually made us some personalized teas here. This one's called Tumor Chick Tea. Special blend for White House on the Hill right there. It's got little, looks like little corn almost in there. And then we got Mr. Blue's Earl Grey in honor of our Peacock. And look, there's some blue sprinkles back in here. And check this out. Is there anybody else in the world that has emu tea? This one's called Pink Emu Serenity. How cool is that? And then look at this pink stuff back in here. That's funny. So Farmhouse Teas, they're friends of ours. They're in Oregon. They've been followers of our channel ever since we got started. And we have an affiliate link through them down in our description. If you use that link, and then there's a code in there that you can get 10% off with. And they do not have any of these teas for sale on their site, but they will give away some of these to the first few people that order through that link. So if you want a special collector's item from White House on the Hill, go down to that link and good luck getting some of this tea. This is so cool. Farmhouse Teas, uh, St. Fiacra's Farm, we really appreciate it. Thank you for, for doing this for us. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun drinking our emu and our peacock and our chick tea thanks guys and our duck is done so we're gonna get this out and put it on the table let's do it how's it look looks good yeah, yes you want to try some yeah i love it see how clean it comes off the bone there you go okay, buddy there you go <laughs> can you eat all that Tired. You can? All right, Becky, so we were kind of ranting on ducks today, not giving us enough eggs, not really carrying their weight around the farm, but how do you feel about ducks compared to chickens and other birds? They don't dig around, they don't make dust baths and little holes in your yard and stuff, so they're good for that, but they do make a mess with the water, you're always getting in it, taking a bath in it and stuff, but they're fun, they're just different personality. Because they're definitely different from chickens, though, where the chickens I always feel like they're grumpy, most of them. The ducks just seem to be just more happier about life. They just seem to be more excited to come out in the morning and they have a lot more fun. So I think- First one's out and the last one's uh -huh. in. That's right. All right, we got the wishbone here. You ready here, buddy? Yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Something's breaking it. Huh. Did I get it? <laughs> Where'd you get it? You got it. Baby. My wish comes true. Yeah! What was your wish? Should I tell him? Yes! You My did. wish is for...